you probably haven't heard this word, but cordycepin is the new fantastic antioxidant energy deep sleep solution that you need and didn't know. Welcome to Don't Look Up, where we ask you to look up. Let's get into cordycepin and why it might be the most underrated compound in your longevity stack. Okay, first question. Is cordycepin just from mushrooms? The answer is that cordycepin is the most potent compound in the cordyceps mushroom. The cordyceps mushroom has tons of compounds in it, but cordycepin is the most powerful. Not a lot of cordycepin though in the mushroom, just about 0.03% of the mushroom itself. But it's this compound that gives the power to the cordyceps mushroom. Is it like adenosine? Cordycepin is an adenosine analog. What is adenosine? Adenosine has tons of roles in our body. Adenosine works as a neurotransmitter. When adenosine binds to the receptors in the brain, it makes you feel sleepy. Adenosine is also part of adenosine triphosphate, ATP. So we need adenosine to make more energy in the body. And we have feedback loops to understand how much energy that we need to make depending on how much ATP that we make every single day. Fun fact, we make about 165 pounds of ATP every single day. Adenosine is also very important in the immune system. It's very important for inflammation, uh, for inflammation downregulation, for immune system modulation from an antiviral perspective as well. And there might be some roles as well because adenosine also is one of our base pairs in our DNA. Cordycepin works just like adenosine in the body. And that's why it has multiple roles overall from sleep induction, from immune system modulation, decreasing inflammation, downregulating growth, and potentially as an anti-cancer, anti-allergy, and more. How long does it take to feel the effects of cordycepin? Are we talking minutes, hours, or days? That's a good question too. Cordycepin is relatively short acting. It lasts for about four to six hours on a half-life perspective. Now, cordycepin is like adenosine, and adenosine is actually very, very short acting, about 10 minutes total. And so cordycepin is much longer acting as a result of that. When it comes to how it affects you and how it's going to interact with your biology, that might take longer for you to see the benefit. The thing about not getting sick is that people don't remember when they're not sick. (laughs) They just remember when they are sick. And so sometimes it's hard to know if cordyceps is working because you're not getting sick and you feel fine. Would you have gotten sick otherwise? And sometimes that can be hard for people to piece out a little bit. But we do know that almost immediately, if you wear something like an aura ring or another tracker, you're going to see your deep sleep go up. That's why we often recommend taking cordycepin at night because you will see that deep sleep bump. It works like adenosine. It's one of those neurotransmitters in our brain that helps us feel sleepy. We have more adenosine throughout the day if we do more exercise. If anybody's listening and they know that they had a long day or a lot of exercise that day, they have a much higher sleep pressure. That's because of adenosine. And so cordycepin can work just like that and help increase your deep sleep as well. In essence, if you are taking cordycepin, you're taking tromune, you might have an immediate benefit on deep sleep. You might see that you feel better overall when you wake up in the morning, but not getting sick is hard for people to quantify sometimes unless it's done in kind of the rear of your mirror. Like, oh, I would have gotten sick most likely if I hadn't taken tromune. The other aspect that I've seen here is that people start taking it when they first get sick, when they first start feeling the signs and symptoms of feeling like they have a cold or some sort of viral syndrome going on. If they take it very quickly, we've seen rapid recoveries within a couple hours even at times. With my own family, I've seen this as well. Just one night of good sleep when something's coming on and the next day they feel great. Can I mix tromine with morning coffee or will that mess its effectiveness? This is a really cool stack, okay? So cordycepin works just like adenosine. Adenosine makes you feel sleepy. Caffeine blocks adenosine receptors, meaning that those receptors in the brain get blocked so adenosine can't bind. That's why caffeine makes us feel more wakeful in general. So you can stack low doses of cordycepin at tromion, like a quarter or a half a troche, if you've had caffeine ahead of time. Caffeine's gonna block those receptors in the brain, so cordycepin's not gonna bind to them and work like adenosine there, but it's gonna work like adenosine in your cells, in your mitochondria. So you have the capacity to stack cordycepin with caffeine, caffeine first, then cordycepin, to enhance mitochondrial function and to increase your energy producing capacity. I don't recommend taking caffeine late at night, of course, because that won't make you sleep, but if you're taking it in the morning with the cordycepin, it's a fantastic stack overall for increased exercise performance, There's some evidence of VO2 max increases and overall cardiac performance going up when you combine them together. So how does Tromune compare to other cordyceps supplements in terms of cordyceps content and bioavailability? So cordyceps is a fantastic mushroom and it's been used for 10,000 years plus in the world of Chinese medicine because it has an effect on the lungs and the kidneys, on the heart. 
on the musculoskeletal tissue. And it does that because it's increasing energy. It also has some antioxidants in there, some B vitamins, some GABA actually as well. So the cordyceps mushroom is a fantastic one, but their cordyceps content in the mushroom is 0.03% of the mushroom by weight. So not a lot. So what we've done at Troscriptions is we've made it extremely potent, 75 milligrams of tromune per troche. You would have to eat like 75 grams of mushroom to get that much cordyceps. So we've done something very special here by concentrating and making more potent the cordyceps, the most active ingredient that has the most profound and compelling studies on how we can work on the immune system, uh, decreasing inflammation, fighting infection, as a potential anti-cancer, anti-allergy, even something that may help with liver function, detoxification, and the gut microbiota as well. And can I stack Tromune with other adaptogens like rhodiola or ashwagandha for enhanced performance? The answer is absolutely, you can do this. The key to understand is that Tromune or cordycepin really does work in a very similar adaptogenic way as rhodiola and ashwagandha do. And so it just depends on what your goals are. Overall, ashwagandha is gonna be something that helps relax the nervous system, as will rhodiola with adrenal support in general. So taking it at night in combination might be very, very beneficial because the cordyceps is supporting the immune system, decreasing inflammation, fighting infection, and supporting from an antioxidant perspective as well. Yes, we have a lot of people that are taking these in combination and doing very well. But of course, if you're combining things together, always be mindful of starting off at lower doses to make sure you tolerate it well before you increase the dose from there. Can tromune be used during fasting periods without breaking the fast or affecting autophagy? What it comes down to is when you're fasting, you are creating a lot of stress on the system to help rebuild it in various ways, but that can be challenging for people. So what I found is sometimes using adaptogens during a fast can be very helpful in the setting of trying to help people support their system while they're going through the fast. So it's not something that I use a lot of during fast, but I use methylene blue during fasts as well because it helps support mitochondrial function while you're detoxifying with the fasting period. I use cordycepin from Tromune in the evenings because one thing that could really be suffering as well when you're on a fast is your sleep. When you're in the ketogenic state, the fasting state in general, your body is more stressed. It's more on the hyper activity aspect of things. So it can be very helpful to have ways of downregulating the nervous system. And Tromune is a fantastic way to do that because cordycepin is going to increase deep sleep. And then while you're sleeping, it's going to help with an anti-inflammatory aspect, immune system modulation, etc. So in essence, my sense is it does not break a fast to use cordycepin. You can use that. You can use methylene blue. You can use other antioxidants if you need to, to help support the oxidative stress system, the inflammatory pathways while you're on these fasts that are trying to regenerate your tissue and rebuild your immune system and your gut and things like that. Next one, I've got some annoying knee inflammation. Could cordycepin help with that or not? Nah. <laughs> cordycepin, as mentioned, is a fantastic anti-inflammatory overall. And so we've seen massive benefits from joints, from muscles, from you know, brain dysfunction, from all different types of issues as well. It's a profound anti-inflammatory is what it comes down to. So is it the only thing you might need for knee inflammation? The answer is probably not, but can it be something that can help you mitigate the need for other doses of high strength NSAIDs, for example, at least clinically, that's what we're seeing overall. And the great thing about it, again, is you can take it at night and it'll help you sleep. And sleeping is so important to regulate your inflammatory cascade. If you're not sleeping well at night, you're not going to be, be able to regulate your inflammation. And if you're not regulating inflammation, everything is going to get harder to treat. Everything's going to feel worse overall. So I use a lot of cordycepin tromune for inflammation. I use a lot of methylene blue as well in clinical practice for inflammation as well, because inflammation is a sign that there's mitochondrial stress, that there's antioxidant capacity needs. And so adding these things together can be really, really helpful overall to your inflammatory stack. Been dragging from this cold for about a week. Would cordycepin help or should I have save it for later? Cordycepin is going to work the best if you take it immediately at the signs of an infection within the first couple hours, even if you can. If you're like me, you're like, no, I'm not, I'm, my throat hurts, but it's just something I ate or something like this. But you kind of know deep down that there's something going on. And that's when you want to take it and really double down on your dosing. If you take it regularly, increase your dose. If you don't take it regularly, take at least a half a trochee, if not a full trochee for five to seven days. If you've waited five to seven days and you're still having those cold symptoms, absolutely can be still helpful in that case as well. It just won't be as helpful as it would have been if you took it earlier on in the process. In essence, what's happening with a cold or viral infection is that most of the symptoms that you're having are related to 
the stress of the immune system being revved up and getting rid of the virus. Typically, it's not the virus itself that's causing you symptoms. It's the body's response to the virus itself. So by the time the body's responding like that, the immune system is already doing what it needs to do to help support the system to recover, detoxify, and get better. So next time, take it early. Take it immediately at the signs of infection, and you will see a benefit. I've seen it across the board. Kids, adults, elderly, and everybody else in between. Does cordycepin help with allergies? This is very interesting. Cordycepin has been shown to modulate the immune system in a way to decrease the potential to have allergic symptoms. Is this a replacement for other types of medications? The answer is probably not at this point, but can it be a supportive while you're doing the other work of working on inflammation, working on allergic symptoms? The answer is absolutely. So we have had people be able to wean off some of the over-the-counter medications using cordycepin. However, again, you don't want to do this unless you're working with a provider to help you understand what's best for you. But the beautiful thing about Tromune and cordycepin is that it's extremely safe and it's extremely powerful overall. And so the other aspect of it is though, you don't often feel the results right away. If you have allergies, chronic autoimmune conditions, chronic inflammation, it may take a little while for the cordycepin, the tromune, to start working. So if that's the case, you really got to give it a shot, at least a couple weeks, if not longer, before you say it's not going to help you. Is cordycepin an antioxidant too? It is an adaptogen, cordycepin, and it works as an antioxidant along with helping you make energy as well, decreasing inflammation, fighting infection. So it's a very comprehensive molecule. The utility of it in essence, is inflammation. Inflammation is what's killing us over time. And inflammation happens from anything you can imagine, from insulin resistance to toxins in our environment, to stressful spouses, kids that scream at you, you scream at the kids, you don't sleep well, and the list goes on, medications, infections, and things. And so inflammation is where cordycepin shines. And it does this by modulating several pathways related to inflammation including the capacity to increase your antioxidant potential at the same time. Do I have to worry about it eating my brain? <laughs> so cordyceps and the cordyceps mushroom have gotten a lot of notoriety the last couple of years from a series called The Last of Us on HBO, where the cordyceps mushroom mutates, infects humans, and makes them zombies and creates the zombie apocalypse. And so cordyceps, the mushroom, is very well known to infect insects and arthropods, take over their nervous system, and make them into mushroom-producing factories. So that is actually true. But there's no indication at all that cordyceps will go into your brain and will make you a zombie, I promise. But it's super interesting, right? Because how does it do that? And that's actually why in Chinese medicine it became this amazing compound when they tried to understand why or how it could take over the nervous system of insects and make them into zombies and make them into mushroom producing factories. So some of the elements that are in the cordyceps mushroom are very, very powerful and can do this to arthropods. As a human, and you're listening, please don't worry. Cordyceps will not infect your brain and cordycepin will only optimize your brain and decrease inflammation. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Don't Look Up, where we ask you to look up. <laughs> Curious conversations about health, grounded in science, and we answer your questions. And today it was all about cordycepin and cordyceps. And no, you're not gonna become a zombie. It's going to optimize your health. Mm -hmm.